Compound probabilities. A compound event combines two or more simple events using the word and or the word or. When we're working with mutually exclusive events, the probability is found by summing the individual probabilities of the events. So if we have a probability of A or B, what you would do to find the probability is find the probability of A and then find the probability of B and add them together. When we have overlapping events, the events are not mutually exclusive. So mutually exclusive has no overlap in the probability. But when we have overlapping events, the probability that overlapping events A and B or both will occur is expressed as, so the probability of A or the probability of B would equal, you would find the probability of A, you would add it to the probability of B, but then you would need to subtract out the probability of that overlap. So whatever the overlap is, so you're not including that value twice. So you always have to subtract out the overlap. So let's do an example here. In a survey about change in policy, 100 people were asked if they favored, opposed, or had no opinion. So you see the values in the table that we have here. Now we're asked to find the probability that a randomly selected respondent to the survey opposed or had no opinion about the change of policy. So we're looking at the opposed or no opinion. So we're finding that the, that the probability is mutually exclusive because there's no overlap in these events. So when I find the probability, I'm going to find the probability of oppose and a probability of no opinion, and I'm going to add them together. So a probability of opposed would be that 37 over 100 plus the probability of no opinion would be 36 over 100. So when I add this together, I end up getting 73 over 100, or it would equal 0.73 or 73%. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have ended up with 0.55 as the probability. Pause and try. And in this case, you would end up with 0.35 as your probability. Pause and try. Now remember, when you have a relative frequency, if you don't have a total, you're going to have to find the total. And in this case, the total was 36. And when you find the probability, you end up with 0.444. So let's do an example here. A blood bank catalogs the type of blood given by donors during the last five days. A donor is selected at random. We want to find the probability the donor has type B or is RH positive. So when we're looking at this table, when we look at type B, the type B is a total of 45 out of the 409. And the positive, or the H, or the RH positive, we have a total of 344 out of the 409 that have positive blood type. So when we look at this, you can see that we have an overlap of 37 meaning that the type B, the 37 was added in the total for 45, and for the positive, that 37 was added into the total of 344. So because it's added in both totals, you cannot include it in both of your probabilities. So when you're doing the probability, you're going to need to take out the overlap, the, the doubling of that 37. So how to do this, you want to find the probability of B first, which would be that 45 over 409. And then you're going to find the probability of positive, which would be that 344 over 409. And then you want to subtract out 
one of those 37s because you used it twice. So you only need to subtract out one. So you're going to subtract out the 37 over 409 to find the actual probability of this. So this is that overlap that needs to be subtracted out. So your probability for it being a type B or RH positive would be 0.861. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have gotten a probability of 0.840. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have gotten a probability of 0.851. Pause and try. So this probability is 0.693. Pause and try. And this probability is 0.995. This next example is we don't have a table, so we can't see the overlap. We need to define what the overlap is. So of 1,560 students surveyed, 840 were seniors, and 630 read a daily paper. The rest of the students were juniors. Only 215 of the papers read were juniors. Now we're asked to find the probability that a student was a senior or read the daily paper, read a daily paper. So when you're looking at this, we want the probability of a senior. So we can find that easily. Now when we find the or, and the or means we're adding, the readers, the probability of readers, we have this 630 over the 1560. But you have to be careful here because we have an overlap. And the overlap is the seniors that read the paper, the daily paper. So how to find the senior total that read the daily paper is you have to go by the information that's given. And the information here that's given is we're told that out of those 630 readers, 215 of them are the juniors. So to find the seniors, we need to take the 630 and subtract out the juniors. So the total for the readers for that were seniors were that 415. So that's my overlap here, that 415 seniors that read, and I need to take that overlap out in, the four, in order to find this true probability. So we end up with a 0.676 as our probability. Pause and try. So this is similar here where we have a probability where 160 beauty spa customers were surveyed and 96 had hair style and 61 had manicures. And you see here they're telling you that 28 of the customers only had manicures. So that is an overlap when we talk about the combination of hairstyle and manicures. So you need to take the 61 and subtract the 28 to find the overlap of people who had the hair style and manicure, which is that 33. So you should have gotten a probability of 0.775. Pause and try. So again, that overlap is that 52, and you should have gotten a probability of 0.61. So the next type of compound probability, when we have independent events, and two events, A and B, are independent if A occurs, and it doesn't affect the probability of B. We're going to be using the multiplication rule for the probability of A and B happening. So when we're talking about the probability of A and B, we're going to be multiplying, and you see you're going to multiply the probability of A to the, multipl to, to the probability of B. So we have an example here where Joanna has three roses, four tulips, and one carnation in a vase. She's going to randomly select one flower. 
She took a photo and took a photo of it and put it back. She then repeats these steps. What is the probability she selected a rose both times? So you want to find the probability of her selecting a rose both times. And because she put the first flower back, that doesn't change the total when she selects the second rose. So when you're doing the probability here, you're going to find the probability of it being a rose the first time, and then you're going to find the probability of it being a rose the second time. So when you do the probability here, you're going to multiply the probability of a rose, which is 3 out of 8, times the probability of a, the second one being a rose, which would be 3 out of 8. And when you get this probability, you're going to end up with approximately 0 .4, 0 .141. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have gotten a probability of 0.16. Pause and try. So this one, you're given the probabilities already. It's a 90% chance of survival. So we have that. And the patient is 45% chance of heart damage. You're given that. So when you're finding the probability of survival and heart damage heals, you're going to multiply the two probabilities together. So you should have ended up with 0 0.405. Pause and try. So in this case, you're going to multiply the 0.85 to itself three times, and you get 0.61. So now this next one is when we have dependent events. Two events, A and B, are dependent if A occurs and it affects the probability of B occurring. So dependent will affect the second probability. So a probability of A and B occurring we would end up having the probability of A times the probability of A given that A already happened. So a lot of times you might not have, you might have in there the words without replacement. So if you're taking something out, then the total is going to change if it says it's without replacement. So a key note here is sometimes a problem will not specifically state whether it is a problem with or without replacement, but you have to use your own common sense when it comes to a probability problem. If we're talking about people maybe going on a trip and you're going to choose five of your friends, we well you can't, and you're going to choose two out of the five, well, you can't choose the same friend twice, so it will be a dependent event. So let's do this example here. Best Buy is having an iPod giveaway. They put all the iPod shuffles in a bag. Customers may choose an iPod without looking at the color. Inside the bag there are four orange, five blue, six green, and five pink iPods. If Maria chooses one iPod at random and then her sister chooses one iPod at random, what's the probability they are both choosing an orange iPod? So again, the first thing you're going to need here is you're going to need some type of total. So you're going to have to actually add 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 5 together. You need your totals. Now, when we get that total, we want to find the probability of orange, Maria getting an orange, and then the probability of her sister getting an orange. Now, in this case, it's not telling me whether it's replaced or not, but if, she, if Maria is choosing an iPod, She's going to keep it. She's not going to put it back in. So when you're finding the probability, you're going to end up with Maria's probability is going to be 4 out of 20. But because Maria's not giving her iPod back, her sister is going to choose an iPod, and it's going to change the value of the probability. If Maria has an a orange iPod, then there's only three oranges left. And the total number of iPods change because Maria kept her iPod. So you end up having three 
over 19 as her sister's probability. And when you multiply this together, you should get a probability of approximately 0 0.032. So again, when you have a probability less than 0 0.05, it's unlikely something like this would happen. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have gotten 0.467. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have gotten 0.286. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have gotten approximately 0.294. The next type of probability we're going to work with is a conditional probability. And a conditional probability is the probability of an event occurring given that another, another event has already occurred. Okay, so the probability of B given A. So you see how it would be written in the probability denoted. A key note here is that the total outcome is always going to be based on the given. So when we're looking at probabilities, remember the probability is based on totals. So you need a total. But in a conditional probability, the total is going to be based on the given because we're already told something and that eliminates everything else that is not part of that given information. So let's do an example here. Survey given to surgery patients at a given hospital. Results are displayed in the table below. Determine the probability that the person was satisfied with the results of their surgery given that the person had knee surgery. So we already know that the person had knee surgery, so because we know that, our total is going to be based on the fact that they had knee surgery. So the total in this probability is going to be 95. That is the, the total number of knee surgery. Everything else doesn't matter because we already know that it's based on the fact they had knee surgery. And that they were satisfied is going to be the 70 in the satisfied for knee surgery. So this probability here would be 70 over 95 or approximately 0.737. So we're using this same example, but we're asked determine the probability was dissatisfied with the results of the survey surgery given that the person had hip surgery. So now the given is based on the hip surgery, and the hip surgery total is that 105. So because the given is the hip surgery, we know that it's in hip surgery. The dissatisfied is that 15, so then we end up with 15 over 105, which is approximately 0.143. And this next example, you see the same determine the probability that the person had heart surgery given that the person was dissatisfied with the results of the survey or surgery. So again, dissatisfied is the total of 45. So we need to use the total of dissatisfied surgeries. And then we look at what we're looking for the probability. So it would be 5 divided by 45, which is approximately 0.11. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have gotten 0 0.360. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have gotten 0.375. Pause and try. So here we should have gotten 0.316, pause and try. This you should have gotten 0.625, pause and try. This you should have gotten 0.222, pause and try. This you should have gotten 0.796, pause and try. This you should have gotten 0.178. Pause and try. 
this, she should have gotten 0.154. Pause and try. And this, she should have gotten 0 0.429.